Welcome back to the Lordswood School Book Nook. So as you've seen from the title of the video, I am going to be talking today about some new releases that I have picked up over the last couple of weeks. Now, before I go on and talk about the books that I want to talk about in this video today, I will just mention that two of the books that I mentioned in my previous video, um, The Danger Gang by Tom Fletcher and David Baddiel's Future Friend, are both also new releases, which is why they were discounted in Morrison's. Um, and actually, you can get them cheaper online as well. So those are new releases, but obviously I'm not going to talk about those again. Um, I am actually going to start with another one of Tom Fletcher's books, though. So the first book I'm talking about is The Christmasaurus and The Winter Witch. Now, I love a sprayed edge. I do love a sprayed edge on a book. And I've actually bought this for my niece for Christmas. She picked it out when we went to Waterstones just before um, lockdown started again. And as you can see, it was on the buy one, get one half price table, which was fantastic. Um, she picked this out because obviously she loved the cover. I mean... It is absolutely fantastic. Um, now, I will read the back to you so that you can get sort of a hint. It is a sequel. Um, so there is another book in the series um, that was obviously just called The Christmasaurus. So this is the second book in the series. Um, I can't say for sure whether it's a continuation, in which case you, you would have need to have read the first one or not, because I haven't read it. But I'll read the back to you. Um, maybe that will become clear. So we've got uh, Magic is about to take hold of William Trundle's life again because he has just discovered that Christmas itself is in danger. Now we must return to the North Pole, where we'll meet the Christmasaurus, the most extraordinary dinosaur who proudly pulls the sleighs for Santa. Yes, it's really him, who travels all around the world delivering presents on Christmas Eve, thanks to the Winter Witch. Icy and mysterious, she has the amazing power to freeze time itself. And it says that it's the story is full of magic, adventure and a friendship like no other. It's saying it's the most enchantive, enchanting festive read for the whole family. Now, it does say at the bottom, have you read William's first adventure? But it doesn't say whether it is necessary for you to have read it. Um, but I will pick this up and I will let you know in maybe a future video. Um, but the illustrations in here are so beautiful. I mean, just have a look at this. He's so cute. I love the Christmas Horus. Um, and I have read the first book and I really enjoyed it. So I will probably pick this up, maybe read it before I give it to, to my niece um, and let you know whether you do need to have read the first one first. But I'm I'm really excited to pick this one up and I hope to see some of you too. Okay, so the next book that I'm going to talk about is called The Midnight Guardians, and it's by Ross Montgomery. Um, now, this was uh, this is actually the November pick for Children's Book of the Month for Waterstones, um, and rightly so, it is well deserved. It's a fantastic story. Um, it's actually a World War II story, so great for Year Six. Um, but again, any other year group in Key Stage Two can definitely pick this up, um, and it's essentially the story of a boy named Cole. And he has three imaginary friends. And these three imaginary friends are a six foot tiger, um, a badger that wears a waistcoat and a miniature knight. And these imaginary friends, he comes to find that his sister is in some danger um, and then needs to and goes on a quest through Bomb Blitz London with these three imaginary friends who have come to life to save his sister. Um, it's a lovely story. Um, there's, it's full of magic and intrigue, but is also still obviously true to um, being a World War II text. So definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, obviously, it, that was also in the buy one, get one half price um, deal when I went into Waterstone. So definitely one to have a look at. Now, I can't help but feel like it's not a new release video if I'm not talking about a David Williams book. Let's face it, David Williams has always got a new release, whether it is a picture book or a novel much like this one is. So it's called Codename Bananas. And I've got to be honest with you, I haven't read this one yet, but I do have someone in my class that has just finished this book. And I'm actually going to hand over to him and he's going to tell you all about it, what he liked 
and why he would recommend it to you. So I'm handing over to Jacob now. In this book, Eric and has lost his mum and dad to the, to the World War II and is now living with his grandma. But his ma grandma says he has to go home straight away from school in case he in case of something bad happening. Instead, he decides to go to the London Zoo. His uncle Sid sneaks him in because he's a zookeeper. And then, and then he's then he looks at gorillas and guess what he teaches her? Oh. He teaches her to do raspberries. <laughs> and then. And then, at night time, he sneaks out of Grandma's house, and then he goes, he goes back to the zoo. He finds his uncle Zip, Zip, Sid, doing working, but but he knew he only does day shifts. So he asks, he asks Sid, he asks Sid, what are you doing here? And then he just asks it back, and, and he says, well, I asked you first, and then. Then he says, yeah. well, I'm here because I'm working the night shift. Then he says, no, you don't do the night shift. You've always been here with the day. You can't do two shifts. They have to, so when they get caught cool at the night, and then then uh, Eric's told he can never go and do it again, but, it's, but he stays and hears that the manager, Sir Frederick Frown, who protects, Pronounces his R's like W's. Says that. Says that. He, says to Sid that he's fired, and to the bad vet who gives bad injections and the, and the animals died, and he said to kill the gorilla, and and then he then then he quickly ran out of the zoo, but when he got back to his house, he saw that Grandma's house was gone. It was all rubble. And, and then he, he saw people standing by the front of it talking about what grandma would do and that she didn't deserve it. So he, and then the police come and, he, and they find out that, that he finds out that he's got no home anymore. And then they say, come with us to the stage, we'll find you a good home. And he says, I'm not going to a different home and runs off. But he has to jump on the boat to get away under Tower Bridge. My favourite part of the story was uh, was that we that in some point that they uh, they have to they have, there's an epic chase scene and they have to run they have to run away from from Nazis. And then, then they run down. But the people in the zoo are there. And then they got, then they run down. But there's a U-boat, and then they get captured. Uh, no, you don't need to know everything about World War Two to enjoy this book. Because I, I don't know too much things about World War Two, but I. And I enjoyed this book, and uh, and also some German names. You might learn some new words. Okay, so I actually found out about the next book when I was watching the news, BBC News, and the author who is Liz Pitchon. Now, Liz Pitchon did all of the. She's written all of the Tom Gates books. Um, and she was on the news and she was talking about the fact that when she visits schools and does school visits, um, the children are always commenting on her shoes. Um, she loves shoes and she decorates all her own shoes and they're really wacky and crazy. And it's always the one thing that the children ask her about. So she said she decided to write a book about her shoes. Um, so the book is called Shoe Wars. And it's got a gold cover. I mean, that is fantastic. <laughs> um, and when I saw this picture on here, I thought there's no way that's actually what her shoes look like. Yep, it is. <laughs> she definitely wears shoes that look like this. Um, so essentially it is 
one vile villain, two courageous children, the flying shoes of your most epic dreams. <laughs> okay, so this sounds absolutely brilliant. And I will say what has impressed me most about this book is the, just the little touches that make it really special, like the actual book itself. Obviously, it is full of illustrations as well, which we love. We love an illustration. Um, but it's also got one of those little bookmarks in it, one of the sort of string bookmarks. But it's a shoelace. I mean, that's brilliant. That's genius. It's a book about shoes and there's a shoelace as a bookmark. Fantastic. What more could you want? Um, haven't read this one yet, but I'm going to put it in my classroom and hopefully one of my lovely year six children will pick it up and tell me exactly what they think of it. Hopefully, maybe in a future video. Okay, so the last book that I'm going to talk about today is one that I was so excited to get my hands on. Um, it has just come out. It is literally a brand new release. I think I got my copy the day or so after it came out. Um, and when it was delivered to school, I've never been so happy in my life. And that is J.K. Rowling's new book, The Ichabog. Um, it is obviously a standalone it's got nothing to do with Harry Potter whatsoever, but we still love it. Um, and it's essentially the story of the Kingdom of Cornucopia, which was once the happiest place in the world. It had plenty of gold, a king of the finest moustaches you could imagine, and butchers and bakers and cheesemongers whose exquisite foods made a person dance with delight when they ate them. Everything was perfect except for the misty marshlands to the north, which according to legend were home to the monstrous Ichabog. Um, I'm not going to go massively into the synopsis, but what I will say is that I think my favourite part about this book is that every single one of the illustrations is, they're all done by children. So all of these are completely illustrated by children. So that particular picture is by a young girl named Caitlin and she is eight years old from the UK um, and it's not just children from the UK it's children from all over the world uh, I mean the Republic of Ireland, India, um, India there's quite a few children from India here um, but it is absolutely beautiful and I haven't read it yet but I cannot wait um, to get started on this one and I mean it's beautiful, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's going to look absolutely lovely on my Harry Potter shelf. It's still going to go with my Harry Potter book. So, you know. So uh, I got this one on Amazon. It was £10, um, which for the hardback here, I thought was absolutely great. So I cannot wait to read that one. And if anybody does want to, to borrow it, feel free to ask. So that's all of the books that I am going to talk about today. I certainly have a lot of reading to do. Um, with all of these new releases and getting caught up on them. Uh, if you have any thoughts, feel free to comment below. And I have also put all of the links to where I purchased these in the description box so that if you did want to pick them up yourself, then you can. Um, I look forward to seeing you in my next video where I'll have lots more books to talk about, I am sure. Um, and I'm hoping to have some other children, much like I had Jacob in the video today, feature on the channel in the future. So see you in the next video. Happy reading.